Hey guys, my name is Julianne. I'm one of your teen services librarians over at the main library on Goodwood. So I don't know if y'all got to see the Mars rover landing a couple of months ago, but it was awesome. Uh, one of the things that was especially cool was its parachute. It had kind of an odd design, but it only took people a couple of hours to figure out that there was actually a secret message written in binary on it. Uh, the message was, Dare Mighty Things, and it was followed by the mission's headquarters coordinates back here on Earth. So in honor of the perseverance, we're gonna make our own record mirrors, paint it with our own binary uh, messages on it. So supplies that accompany this video are available at the main library in a limited capacity. Okay, so we're gonna do things backwards this time because we really need to know what we're doing with this. So let's talk about the math. When we count in everyday life, we use something called a base 10 number system. And that means everything is based off 10. Uh, every place value you move to the left is worth 10 times more than the place value to the right of it. So you see, we start off with the ones column. Then we move over to the tens column and 10 is 10 times one. Then we move over to the hundreds column because 100 is 10 times 10. So you can keep moving on to the thousands and the 10 thousands and so on into infinity. Okay, so if you've got the number 713, you know that there are three ones, one tens, and seven hundreds in it. And if you want to start adding to this number, you add things in the right place value. So if you want to take 713 and add one to it, you're going to put that in the ones column, which is, you know, going to give you 714. But let's say you want to add 20 to this instead. You're going to take 714 and you're going to put two in the tens column. You're not going to put that anywhere else because uh, 20 is two tens and that's going to give you 734. All right, so when we fill up one of our place value columns, we don't just keep going in that column, we transfer it over to the next column. So let's say we wanna take 713 and we wanna add seven to it. We're gonna fill up our ones column there, so we're just gonna move it over and say we have 720. So if you had 19 kangaroos and then you added one more kangaroo to it, you wouldn't say you have one tens kangaroo and 10 ones kangaroo, you just say you have 20 kangaroos. Lastly, if you don't have any numbers in a column, you just put a zero in its place. If you're saying 403, you keep the zero in the tens place to show that the tens place still exists, but there's just nothing in it right now. You don't leave it out, you don't put an emoji or anything else. Okay, so there's no rule that says you have to use base 10. Actually, there's a lot of scenarios where something other than base 10 makes a whole lot of sense. So today we're gonna be using binary numbers, and I promise they're not as daunting as they sound. <laughs> Okay, so binary numbers are a base two number system. It works pretty much exactly like our regular base 10 system, but everything is based on two and your only options for digits are zero and one. Okay, so in binary, your first placeholder option is still one, but your next placeholder option is two. So everything is just gonna double. You move over to the fourth place value next, then the eights, the 16th, the 32s, the 64s, and so on to infinity. Okay, so how do you even count in binary? Uh, you're just gonna make things add up to what they would be in base 10 system. So if you wanna write one, you're still just gonna put one in the ones column. And if you wanna go ahead and write two, you're gonna go ahead and put a one in the twos column. But what are you gonna do with that other ones column? Same thing you do in base 10 to show there's nothing there, you're gonna put a zero in it. Okay, and if you wanna go ahead and write three, you're gonna put one in the twos column and one in the ones column. Two and one is three. But what happens when you wanna write four? Yeah, so you're gonna go ahead and write one in the fours column and then show that there's nothing in the twos and the ones column. Okay, so go ahead and take a stab at what it would be to write six in binary. Yep, that's right, you're gonna put one in the fours column, one in the twos column, four and two is six, and then nothing in the ones column. All right, so go ahead and try out writing what 13 would be. Okay, right, if you wanna write 13, you're gonna put something in the eights column, and then you're gonna go ahead and put something in the fours column, so you get 12. Uh, if you added two, you would get 14 to that, so you're gonna skip that, and then you're gonna go ahead and put a one in the ones column. All right, so you guys have got this. Uh, there's one extra bit of weirdness though, because there always is. So NASA divided all of their sections into 10 segments each. So what this means is that every number is gonna have 10 digits in it, and it means we're gonna tack on a whole bunch of extra zeros to the beginning of all of our numbers. So like we had 13, 1, 1, 0, 1. If we're gonna write this in the same format that NASA did, we're gonna have to add 
six zeros to get to 10. Okay, so why even use binary numbers? It is way easier for electronics. Ones can mean on, zeros can mean off, and you can meter the flow of electricity a lot better. Plus, when you're building computer hardware, it's much easier to build things that manage base two numbers than it is to build things that manage base 10 numbers. Okay, to make a binary parachute painting, you're going to need a record, a four inch diameter circular mirror, glue, Q-tips, red paint, white paint, a paintbrush, a pencil, some toothpicks, a ruler, and most importantly, a protractor. Okay, so in your kit, you're gonna have a couple extra pieces of paper that are really gonna help you out. Uh, there's gonna be a binary decoder, a sheet to write your message on, and then a sheet to actually test out what your design's gonna look like before you start permanently painting. So let's go over the decoder real quick. What NASA did is they just had uh, numbers stand in for letters. So since A is the first letter of the alphabet, it gets to be number one. Uh, since O is the 15th letter of the alphabet, it gets to be number 15, and so on. NASA did a couple of other quirky things. Uh, when they started off their message, they blocked off a whole 20 digits in red or ones, which you can see is quite large and binary, uh, to announce they were starting. And then between each word break, they also blocked off 20 digits uh, to show that they were breaking between a word. So we're going to use these to write out our actual message and you've got your binary message sheet, the first two are already blocked out for you. So you have a limited amount of spaces. You have 30 spaces uh, that you can fill up here for your message. Remember that anytime you use a space, you're gonna have to take up two of these blocks for that. So to get started, you really just wanna figure out what you're gonna say and make sure it's going to fit. So you can start filling in your message at the top. All right, so for my phrase, I'm gonna say Paraspera ad Astra 2021. Uh, it's a Latin phrase that means through adversity to the stars, and it seems kind of pertinent to this project. So once you've got your message written out, everything fits and you're happy with it, you wanna go ahead and start using the decoder to fill in the boxes so you know what you're gonna say. So my first letter is a P, which is the 16th letter in the alphabet, so I'm gonna use uh, the number 16 in here and just fill that in. Same thing, E is the, gonna be the fifth letter. And then so on. Okay, so I've got my message sorted out. Everything fits, it's copacetic. Everything matches up on the decoder. Uh, you, when you were looking at your message sheet, you might have been confused about what these blue lines are. So the message on the parachute actually spirals around and there's four levels of it. So these blue lines indicate when you jump up to the next level. When you start filling it in, this should be really obvious what's gonna happen, but it's sometimes nice to have an extra reference. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna use my test sheet uh, to mock this up. Uh, it's easier to do this now than it is to realize you might have a mistake or something's gone wibbly when you have uh, paint involved. So I'm just, this is gonna be my starting point and I'm gonna block out those 20 digits. Okay, so I've got the first 20 blocked out and now I'm gonna go ahead and start transferring from this sheet to not. So the, my first letter is a P, so that's gonna be five white spaces, a filled space, and then four uh, white spaces. All right, cool, so I've, I've got my P set up. My next letter is gonna be an E, so I'm gonna mark this on there, which is three, four, five, six, seven, white spaces, filled, blanks, filled. Okay, so I've made it around my first loop uh, where I ended on the A here. What I'm gonna do next is just hop up to this next level right here and keep going with my message, which is gonna be an S. So we're gonna start where the same, where the A did, and then just move around. Okay, for our next part, you're gonna need the record, pencil, ruler, and protractor. And the protractor is what we're gonna use first. If you have never used one before, there is this center mark down here, and that's where you position everything to measure your angles on it. Uh, so the NASA parachute was designed with eight sections with 10 segments a piece in them. So to get eight sections, we're gonna measure every 45 degrees. And to do that, you're gonna set your protractor, the center of that right in the center. Uh, I'm trying to line it up the song lyrics. And then we're gonna just gonna use our pencil to make tick marks at zero degrees, 45 degrees, 90 degrees, 135 degrees, and then 180 degrees. Uh, I know that's kind of hard to see on film. But what you're gonna do next is you're gonna flip the record over 
just rotate it 180 degrees, put it back like that, and you can already kind of line up the zero marks, and you are going to make tick marks at the other 45, 90, and 135 All right, marks. so what you want to do next is grab your ruler, and these tick marks that should be directly opposite each other, you can see them there and here, here. You want to take your ruler and draw a line that connects the opposite ones. Okay, so when you're all done, you should have eight uh, equally divided sections drawn on there. What you want to do next is you want to go ahead, pull the protractor back out, and you want to divide each of these sections into 10 smaller sections. So to do that, you're going to set it back in the center, and you're going to count every 4.5 degrees and make a tick mark. So I've done the sections that are going to be across from each other where you can match up the line so it's a little easier to see. The quickest way to do this usually is just kind of rotate through, but this tick mark here is going to go all the way to this one on this side, so it's just going to go opposite back and forth. Okay, so we're back and we've got all of our lines on. Again, these were drawn out at every 4.5 degrees. Uh, what I'm going to do next is instead of trying to divide this out to where it is four equal uh, rings around it, I'm just going to use the song breaks as markers. So these skinny little lines here between the other ones are where the song ends on a record. Uh, I'm just going to decide that maybe these first three songs are going to be one ring and then the next two will be the next and so on. But we're going to go ahead and use that guide we made earlier and start adding the red paint. And if you've got a really fine line and you don't think you can do it with your paintbrush. We've got toothpicks for that. Otherwise, I'm just using a paintbrush. Okay, so I've got the first coat of red paint on. Uh, I'm going to do a second coat just so it looks a little bit brighter. When you've got your red paint uh, where you'd like it, go ahead, clean your paintbrush, grab your white paint, and just fill in all the other sections with white paint. Okay, so I'm all finished. I have my message painted on. Uh, what I'm going to do next is grab the mirror, the glue, and the paintbrush. I've cleaned it again. And we're going to glue the, uh, the mirror on. And this is just Elmer's glue. So you don't want to skimp at all on this. You want to make sure it covers the entire back of your mirror. Okay, so once you've got it all glued up, you're going to go ahead and just stick the mirror onto the center of your record as best you can. And then you want to go ahead and let this dry fully before you use it. If you have any questions or comments about today's video, holler at us. Our phone number is 231-3770, or you can leave a comment on this video. Better yet, tag us on Instagram and show us what you made. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. I hope you enjoyed this, and I cannot wait to see you next time.